Key point one. The Scrum method for handling projects ensures profitability. Scrum is a rugby term that captions how a team works together to move the ball down the field. The term has been used for a long time, but applying Scrum to goal setting and teamwork is relatively new, though it has proved its efficiency in executing projects quickly. The Scrum way is a maximally productive method in every ramification. We can use it to address other societal problems besides enhancing work output. However, the focus of this summary is to help teams become more productive at work. Working in a maximally productive way, the Scrum way, doesn't have to be confined to business. Jeff Sutherland There are two ways of handling projects. The waterfall method prioritizes a linear approach to problem solving, and one variable depends on the success of the one before it. The waterfall method often results in wasting money without any significant result. The scrum method is a framework that involves less waste and fewer people, and can help you work more effectively. Utilizing its principles as a person or team can help you achieve tremendous success at work and escape mediocrity. Every team puts in considerable effort to achieve its goals, so everyone will be happy if they can work more smartly. Proper forecasting and teamwork prevent flushing millions of dollars and hours down the drain, especially for teams working on new projects. If you're interested in that, this summary is for you. As you proceed with this summary, you'll learn why achieving goals takes a long time and how to avoid waste in the process. You'll also see why teams are so bad at figuring out how long a project will take and how much effort is required. Remember, the Scrum method brings breakthroughs for teams by helping them to develop structure and enabling them to assess their work. Did you know, the game of rugby dates back to the 19th century, with William Webb Ellis credited as the inventor. Key point two. Scrum offers an efficient way of doing work. As a fighter pilot, Jeff Sutherland's life was often in danger, so he learned the importance of the four-step survival process. Observe, orient, decide, and act. It means, observe the area of importance, chart a course to go into and out of the enemy territory, plan a backup in case of an emergency, and take decisions and follow through. Scrum employs the same techniques. The Japanese martial arts concept Shuha-ri further explains the Scrum method. Shuha-ri describes a level of mastery in different states. The Sha level is the most monotonous. Here, you simply familiarize yourself with the rules and repeat them religiously. There's an opportunity for change and innovation in the Ha stage, but it's minute. The Re stage is where you're fully creative and unhindered. You can discard all the steps you learned in Shu and innovate because you're now close to mastery. Scrum is precisely this way. It's a continuous effort to reach a new state where work flows easily. No heroics. If you need a hero to get things done, you have a problem. Heroic effort should be viewed as a failure of planning. Jeff Sutherland The Scrum innovation has become generally accepted. It prevents projects from being late and budgets from going way above. The waterfall method, the previously most popular working method, is now less common. Don't forget, Scrum says, there are different ways of doing things. You don't have to work in the most complicated, time-consuming, or expensive manner. You might lose relevance in our hyper-competitive world if you insist on doing work as you've always done. By contrast, teams that use the Scrum method can continuously improve productivity and replicate their success. They also end up improving the quality of their work. Did you know? The Shuha Ri concept was first introduced in the martial arts world in the 1930s by Kenji Tamiki, a student of Jigoro Kano, the founder of Judo. The concept is often represented by the Japanese characters Shu Ha Ri. However, it can also be represented by other character combinations, such as Ku Shu Ren or Shu Shin Ko. Key point three. Teamwork is smart work. Teams are critical in work because they get the job done. They are everywhere from the group of surgeons in the theater to automobile experts who build cars. Everyone that runs a business knows how valuable teams are. The interesting thing is that many leaders choose to focus on individuals instead. Focusing solely on specific participants and neglecting others in business and work is a great mistake. Apart from people feeling left out, this approach will stunt your growth because you're not maximizing the potential of everyone available. Remember, you must master the art of delegation to succeed as a manager. But it's not enough to have teams. Every team member must be a high performer in their own right. They should be able to provide optimal results within the shortest possible time. The best teams have specific productivity traits that help them stand out. Some of these characteristics include the following. Transcendence. Their strong purpose allows them to move beyond the ordinary into the extraordinary. Part of cultivating transcendency is having a mission beyond a single individual. Something big and motivating that only requires teamwork. Autonomy. Autonomy means that teams can organize and manage themselves. It also means that they have the power to make crucial decisions on their own without necessarily waiting for permission from those higher up. Cross-functionality. Cross-functionality indicates that teams are self-sufficient. They have all the skills they need to complete any project. Their planning, sales, and production skills reinforce each other. Teams comprising numerous people often use more effort than those with fewer people. American software engineer Fred Brooks says small teams achieve goals five times faster than overcrowded teams. The principle behind this is that the human brain is limited, so it can only relate effectively to a few people. 
Hence, it is expedient to keep your team as compact as possible. The magic number, according to Jeff Sutherland, is a seven-person team. It can work if you have plus or minus two, but anything above nine will slow the team. Sutherland also observed that some teams of three function well, but they may have problems speeding up on urgent projects. Did you know, 2021 research published on Nature.com reports that remote teams communicate more with their immediate colleagues than those working in a traditional office setting. Key point four. Time and rhyme are of great importance in the Scrum method. Time is significant in human endeavors. It affects everything we do from work to pleasure. Upon seeing this incredible importance, it's necessary not to waste it. Unfortunately, that happens at work. We often spend more time on tasks and projects than needed. The worst one is wasting time on projects that teams should never have embarked on in the first place. The Scrum method encourages treating time as finite by breaking down work into small accomplishable tasks that can be completed quickly. Being time conscious means that you're aiming to achieve something valuable at the end of every endeavor. A sure way to feel the urgency of time personally and as a team is by setting deadlines for whatever needs to be done. Jeff Sutherland refers to this as sprints. His team uses this method to produce one piece of working software monthly. The advantage of using sprints is that apart from the speed of completion, it helps teams get feedback before putting so much into a project that isn't in demand by the market. Another group that has taken the sprint technique to another level and profited greatly is Team Wikispeed, a company involved in car production. They make use of one-week sprints to get tangible results. Team Wikispeed categorizes work into three, backlog, doing, and done. This approach keeps all teammates aware of what someone else is working on and how far they've gone. Nothing gets to the done category until a client can use the product. It's not enough to set project deadlines, aka time blocks. Also, ensure you create a working rhythm by locking these time blocks. There should be no room for adding extra tasks after deciding what to do for a particular period. Doing this helps your team consistently remain in the flow state. Try to avoid micromanaging teams, give them enough trust, and create freedom. The essence of Scrum is rhythm. It recognizes that humans are habit-driven creatures who naturally desire patterns. Scrum utilizes this knowledge to help people become better versions of themselves. However, remember that not all habits you've been imbibing as a team are productive. Always analyze to see what's working and what's not. Be bold and cut out activities or patterns that could be more productive. Key point five. Multitasking doesn't increase productivity. The ability to do a lot of things at the same time may appear attractive in this fast-track age. However, juggling many things and doing them with excellence is practically impossible. Even when we think we can, we can't. For instance, some people believe they can drive and talk on their cell phones. In the real sense, people who do this get into more accidents than those who don't. Multitasking often isn't effective or productive at the end of the day. That's because you're making the brain process many requests simultaneously. If you get interrupted by another task, it may take minutes or hours to bring back the attention and awareness you need on the initial project. It will cause you to experience more waste than expected. To minimize waste, avoid procrastination, multitasking, and doing a job halfway. Scrum believes any project left in the process for too long is a waste. Let's talk about halfway tasks a little bit. Have you ever started a project and stopped midway through because life happened? Maybe you had to travel or got extra busy at work and no longer had time. We've all been there, and returning to uncompleted projects is always difficult. Try to avoid this occurrence as much as possible. When you unavoidably have a backlog of uncompleted projects, either get rid of them or prioritize their completion. Remember, changing or reworking your environment can help you reduce procrastination and laziness. Working long hours without rest doesn't necessarily get more work done. Instead, it reduces efficiency and causes several errors and fatigue. Ultimately, mistakes on a job make you waste time trying to fix things. To avoid this, Scrum believes every individual or organization should have a system for identifying when a task is challenging or impossible. Then, quickly decide on the best way forward. The Scrum technique is not a fan of heroic moments. Instead, it encourages teamwork and advises any organization that plans to make significant progress to avoid fear, emotional chaos, and anyone or anything capable of creating it. Did you know? Talking about the dangers of multitasking, according to the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration, distracted drivers in the United States killed over 3,000 people in 2020. Key point six. How to begin practicing Scrum successfully. You can practice the Scrum method anywhere by following the steps below. Pick a business or a product owner. If you're not picking anyone and deciding to be the one following these steps, have a vision of what you will do. If you're going with a business owner, ensure they know the risks, impossibilities, and rewards attached. Pick a team. Your team refers to the people who will do the work. It needs to be small and close-knit, consisting only of people with the skills to make the team's vision a reality. Pick a Scrum Master. A Scrum Master is a person who understands the Scrum method. This person is responsible for ensuring the team stays productive by applying the Scrum techniques. Create and prioritize a product framework. This one clarifies the team's missed opportunities, what they can do, and their full potential. Planning. The Scrum Master and the business owner plan the race and speed of the team. They must agree on a specific goal and decide how to achieve it. 
Keep in mind that you can increase your chances of success as a team if you can set smart goals and work collaboratively to achieve them. Share progress. The Scrum methodology encourages open communication on the state of the project at various levels so that everyone can keep track of its development. Create a Scrum board or use sticky notes to show various project stages. For instance, creating to-do, doing, and done boards help simplify your work process and keep team members informed. Daily Scrum Meetup. This act is significant in the Scrum method. It involves a daily questions and answers session lasting about 15 minutes between the Scrum master and the team. Ask questions like, what did you do yesterday to help the team? Is there any obstacle blocking you or the team from achieving established goals? Sprint Review. Every team needs to review their past projects or sprints continually. This process typically involves the Scrum Master and the team finding areas of improvement to implement and stuff they should stop doing. Start new sprints immediately. A team should take up a new project as soon as they finish a previous one. It enables more productivity and you can maintain momentum this way. Conclusion For many people, work is an expression of fulfillment and happiness. It's a feeling that proves one is aligned with a higher purpose. The fact that you've reached this point signifies you're one of those who value meaningful work. Hopefully, you've gained quality insights from this summary. Let's review the main ideas again so they remain fresh as you leave. To begin with, the Scrum method proposes that change, discovery, and new ideas only work when there's a solid plan. As such, it's advisable to write down your goals and have a detailed plan to achieve them. The second side of goal setting is creating time to reflect on your accomplishments so you can replicate success and make better decisions. Additionally, you've learned from the preceding chapters that developing a flexible mindset will help you grow faster. Don't be too fixated on the old ways of doing things, especially when they're no more productive. True happiness resides in the process of delightful work, not just in the final result. As such, Scrum emphasizes doing thorough work the first time. It will prevent errors that make you frustrated from repeatedly doing the job. For unavoidable errors, it's better to fix them as soon as possible. Leaving mistakes to linger often poses challenges and can wane your motivation. Try this. Create a team of no more than nine people and practice using the Scrum techniques to achieve a given goal. And if that's not possible, immediately practice reflection as discussed earlier. Think back to your most significant success as an individual. Aim to identify what you did to achieve that and how you can replicate the same thing for projects you're working on.